Absolutely, yeah. Last week, uh, last year was a fantastic week. Uh, finished two shots behind, I think second of my own. Uh, played lovely all week. Uh, hold a lot of putts uh, this time last year, which was nice. And uh, obviously, kind of quite keen to go one better this year would be fantastic. But uh, we'll wait and see what we get uh, come tomorrow. How's the form been this week? You obviously played the course a couple of times. Yeah, I played nicely yesterday in the Pro-Am. Uh, made a few birdies and then uh, just played uh, nine holes just now and hit the ball pretty well. Uh, last week was a better week. I've been struggling a wee bit with my ball striking, uh, but Hong Kong was uh, much better. I finished 10th there and uh, maybe should have been a bit higher. But uh, no, no, things are starting to... I feel a bit fresher. I was a bit tired for a few weeks there. Obviously, Ryder Cup takes it out of you. Um, and then I was busy at home doing quite a few bits and pieces for the foundation, so... Bit feel better now. Yeah, obviously a great year, Paul. I went out in this region in Qatar and uh, you win at the Johnny Walker. Uh, and you mentioned the Ryder Cup. It's been a pretty special year for you, isn't it? Yeah, it's been lovely to be back in there again. Uh, it's obviously been a few years since I was uh, top 50 in the world rankings. And uh, I've kind of felt pretty comfortable being back in there. Had a lot of good weeks. Been very consistent. I think nine top tens this year. So uh, it's been a fantastic year. Uh, looking forward to kind of capping it off with a good week this week. Okay, Paul. Thanks, uh, Alan. If you get the mic to Jamie, we'll start the questions off. Thank you very much, Paul. Paul, you mentioned last year here. Can you trace a lot of back of what's happened? Was it, but it's a big turning point for you, and, and if so, why? Well, my um, my confidence got a huge boost at this tournament last year. There's no question. I think uh, to win again in Malaga was a huge step after nine years. Uh, but I think this week was the week that really sort of gave me the self belief you know, to finish second uh, in this event with the field that we had last year and the field again we have this year. Um, you can't do anything but good for your confidence. Uh, and then I had a couple of weeks at home uh, with the kids and then I came out and had two top tens and I win the first three weeks of the year. So I think a lot of my play this year uh, and the last couple of years all goes down to this event. Last year was the real kind of start again of where I kind of felt that I belonged again in the top 50. It's kind of quite, when you're out of there for so long, um, you know, every golfer has spells where they kind of lose a bit of what they've got. This this week, last year, kind of gave me back a lot of that, so it was good. Yes, Carl. Paul, hi. You stepped down from the tournament players committee last year for obvious reasons and with great results, but do you think the current Ryder Cup players should have more representation or more of a voice when it comes to picking the next Ryder Cup captain? And if you had a vote now, who would your vote be for for the next one? Uh, no, I think we've, they, they, they've done pretty well picking the captain the last little while. I don't think there's a problem with the way we pick the captain. Um, and uh, again, I don't, I don't have, a, have a vote or a pick on who's the next captain. Um, so again, it would be unfair uh, for me to name any one individual. But uh, whoever the committee pick, uh, I'm sure he'll do a fantastic job at Glen Eagles. Yes, Mike, on the left there. Thanks. Uh, Paul, you mentioned, obviously, the event here last year, which then went on to you winning at Qatar. Are you, Qatar, obviously, has got uh, a good feeling for you. Are you looking forward to going back to there and defending your title? Yeah, I always love playing in Qatar. It's, uh, it kind of suits the way I play. The greens are pretty firm. Uh, there tends to be a little bit of breeze that blows there. Um, I feel comfortable uh, there. The golf course kind of suits my eye quite a lot. Um, I have no problem knocking the ball down and keeping the ball under the wind. Um, I've had some really good scores there and I've obviously had two wins. Um, so I enjoy, I enjoy playing there. But I think you get, you get golf courses where you just feel comfortable as soon as you arrive. And as soon as I played Qatar for the first time, the course, I just loved it. I just thought it was right up my street. So it's amazing when you go back, you just kind of get good feelings about the place. So looking forward to going back and defending you. Yeah. How are you two boys doing on the golf in front? Yeah, they're good. Craig's uh, 17. He plays off uh, scratch. And uh, Michael, he's 13. He's, uh, he plays a four. So they're, uh, they're both coming on. Uh, they're both uh, very keen on being golfers as a profession. Uh, they both want to be pros. So, you know, we'll wait and see what happens. Craig's, Craig's going to uh, play full-time next year in the amateur scene in Scotland and see how he gets on. And then uh, we'll make a decision on what he does at the end of next year. How do you work with the foundation going? This Brilliant, you've thanks. Put a lot yeah. of work in this it's, year with it. Yeah, it's been good. It's, it's getting bigger and bigger. Uh, it seems to grow every year. We've got uh, more events and more kids, and we've just started the Paul Laurie Academy um, in our area, um, where the coaches are going to select children uh, and they're going to receive tips on rules, fitness, diet, 
long game, short game, course management, everything. So it's going really well. It's busy. Obviously, it's gotten it's gotten pretty big over the years. Uh, it's getting a little bit harder for me to obviously play the, the full schedule and do so much of the foundation. I kind of backed off a little bit of the foundation this year because I was obviously so busy playing. Uh, but I'm still involved and still go along to as many events as I can. And uh, it's been going really good. Yes, Carl. Miguel Angel, of course, broke Des Smith's long-standing record last weekend. Given all you've achieved over the last year or so, do you see yourself breaking that record down the road someday? Uh, well, <laughs> man, yeah, well, you, you don't know, do you? I mean, obviously, Miguel is, uh, he's a bit of a different character. He's obviously kind of done unbelievably well. Um, to be the oldest winner on tour is some, it's a nice thing to have. Um, and he looks as though he could go for a while. Yeah, he doesn't look as though he's finished, Miguel. I mean, he looked comfortable last week. He didn't look nervy or... He didn't look old, that's for sure. So I've got a few years on him, so we'll wait and see. But it's tempting to go on the Rialto, would it? Would it what? It's to go on the Rialto, would it? Uh, well, I have been known. <laughs> yes, Derek. Paul, what's your um, take on the state of the European Tour, this uh, trend for players to be taking up PGA Tour membership, and do steps need to be taken to protect some of the you know, national open titles in Europe? Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's a question that's not, not for me. Uh, that's above my my pay grade, as it were, but it's, no, no, I, I personally, I joined the PGA Tour in 2000 and uh, gave it a try and it wasn't for me, um, I wouldn't see myself um, ever doing that again, um, I, but I definitely see myself playing over there, I mean, the World Golf events and the majors, uh, delighted to, to play over there in sort of six or seven, eight events a year, I can see that happening for a wee while, but to actually live over there and my main schedule being over there, I don't think that'll, that'll happen for me. I tried that in 2000, didn't like it. The kids were quite young. Uh, I had to spend too much time away from them, which I didn't like. I like getting home. Uh, it's about balance. It's about getting your schedule right for me. I have no problem playing over there seven or eight times a year, but that's about as far as it'll go. Yes, right. Uh, Paul, Rory was in yesterday and he said that the course is playing a bit, a bit longer because perhaps the tournament's scheduled a week or so, or so before from last year. Um, does that affect how you set up to play the course and is there anything from last year which you can take out of it which would help you go one step further? Uh, the fairways are a little softer than they were last year which obviously makes it play longer. I would have said that the greens are probably pretty much the same, maybe a little firmer and there's a little bit more rough around the edge of the fairway. It's a little bit thicker in places, which makes it a little harder to, to judge the control of the ball. Um, but I still think scoring will be pretty good this, this week. The greens are so good. Um, the greens are immaculate. And any time you give us greens of that quality, scoring's normally pretty good. But the course will play a little longer than it did last year, but I can't imagine that'll affect scoring you know, a hell of a lot. Um, obviously, these guys are world-class at what they do, so I would imagine somebody will shoot similar to last year. And... Uh, what I take from last year is obviously I, I kind of came within two shots of, of winning last year, so it means I can play the golf course. I know how to get the ball round. Um, it's just a matter of how you play on the week. Uh, I love the course. I love the way it sets up. Uh, the greens are just beautiful, so I would like to think I would hold my fair share this week. Any more for Paul? Yes, from the very far side. Thanks, Alan. Hi. Um, you Hi. talked about how the uh, Qatar um, course really played to your strengths. How close does this course play to uh, to your strengths? Do you think? Um, well, I, again, I think when you, if you're able to hit the ball both ways and hit it high and low, I don't think there's a course that you can't play um, anywhere in the world. But there's just certain courses that sort of, as soon as you get there, you can see that you know you got a chance to win this week. The way it sets up, it doesn't mean to say that. A golf course that doesn't suit my eye it doesn't mean that I can't play it. Um, I probably don't get to any golf course and think that I can't play it, but there's just some that I kind of feel I've got more of a chance than others. You know, and certainly when when you get on a golf course and it's kind of it's rolling quite fast and the greens are quite firm and you've got to control your ball, um, I think I do that pretty well. So, but this week's a little different to Qatar, but it doesn't mean to say I don't feel as though I can win. Um, like we said earlier, your form over the last year has been unbelievable and you can trace it back to the tournament here. What, what happens in your head you know, when, when you have a great tournament like this that can sustain uh, form for the rest of a, a year? Well, it just gives you confidence. It just, I mean, it, it, um, when, you, when you go close to winning 
tournaments of uh, this size, um, obviously, it just gives you a boost. It just you know that you can compete. You know you can you can beat these guys on any given week. Um, it had been even though I won uh, in Malaga at the start of 2011. You know I had a few months in the summer where I didn't play very well. I didn't putt very well and was struggling a wee bit with confidence and. And then all of a sudden you turn up at this event and you kind of have a chance to win on the back nine. That's all you try to do at any tournament. Um, so that's the kind of biggest thing from last year. You kind of turn up and you know, you've got a good shot at winning. Yes, Tony. Paul, having had the season you've had this year, does that, <coughs> going into a new season, 2013 next year, does that make you readjust your expectations, your targets, your goals looking forward? Um, no, not really. I think 2011, I was 18th um, in the order of merit. This year, whatever I'm going to be is going to be ahead of that. Um, so it's a, it's a step in the right direction. I see next year as a, as a kind of similar progression, hopefully. My schedule is going to be a bit different than it was at the start of last year. I wasn't guaranteed to be in the World Golf events until I won in Qatar, whereas now I know that I'm in all the events next year. So again, the schedule, you can, you can plan it out. Um, I'm looking forward to it. You know, it's exciting to be back in the top 50 um, and comfortably so at the minute. So I'm looking forward to, to kicking on again. Um, I still got as much desire as anyone out here to practice and play and put the work in that's needed. So I don't see why I can't have an even better year next year than I've had this year. And Mike, you've got another one just behind you, Tony. Thank you. Do you Paul, do you think these events, the, the, these sort of exhibition games between Woods and Rory and the, the Turkish Airlines. And do you think they're harmful to the European tour in as much as they're not full-field events? Whether these events happen or not is uh, got absolutely zippo to, to do with me. Um, and did Rory not play because he played in that event? I wouldn't have thought so. You know, he, Rory does his schedule, Tiger does his schedule. You know, I do mine. You know, I, I, can't, I can't make them do what they want to do and they can't make me do anything different. So it's up to them what they do and what they plan. But when you've got a situation where you've still got a recession in many parts of the world and you've got that sort of prize money going to an, an unofficial event, if you like, would that prize money not be better off uh, put into a, a full field tournament? Well, I, that's not to do with me. I can't do anything about that. I can't make them put prize money into the European tour that's going out other places. So I'm not sure that's a question for me. What's that? I wish I was that powerful. <laughs> I'm not. Any other for Paul? I think we're all done, Paul. Thanks Good. as always for your time. Good luck this Good. week. Thank you.